Hey there, welcome back to our Okie Dokie Life. Today I'm going to do another recipe out of Stacy's cookbook for fermenting. This is the cookbook that I got from our class that we took, or that me and my friend took at uh, the Okie Homesteading Expo. Uh, today we're going to do fermented salsa. And I'm super excited about this because we've got uh, some produce coming out of our garden and we need to put it to use. So I'm going to quarter up some tomatoes. Brett is going to uh, just half some. Some jalapenos and we're gonna try some banana peppers that have gone red, see what that does to the salsa, so. Yeah, because it calls for a sweet red pepper. Um, it's a sweet banana pepper and it turned red, so <laughs> maybe it'll work. Stacy seems like it's pretty flexible with these recipes. Um, so I'm just gonna make it my own. I'm also gonna chop up a onion that we actually grew. Didn't know we grew, but <laughs> we did plant it at one point last year apparently and it came up this year. Um, yeah, so we're gonna get started. Um, I'm going to actually go ahead and put some salt in these pint jars. And I think it's two teaspoons per jar. And I'm using the Redmond's Real Salt, the handy little shaker that I got in the class. I'm gonna just start with three jars, because uh, it says three to four quarts. I'm gonna see how far the three gets me. And I don't know if you said this while I was out, but we did wash all of these veggies. And our hands. And our hands. <laughs> Since we're not really interested in making this a really spicy salsa, I'm trying to take care and make sure and get all the seeds out and the membranes. Uh, anytime you're dealing with jalapenos or other hot peppers, it's always a good idea to make sure you keep your hands away from your face um, and then wash your hands as quickly as possible once you're kind of done working with them. It may even be advised to use gloves. Um, these, I'm, I'm doing so few right now, I'm not too worried about it. But in the past, I have worked with a lot of jalapeno peppers, and by the end, my hands were just on fire, and it took quite a while for that to stop, so. And the reason we don't want it super spicy is because I don't do spicy. I mean, I can She's a, a wimp. little bit. <laughs> yeah, I'm a wimp. To get the membranes out and everything, I just took a just a regular spoon and scraped it. I just kind of laid it against the um, the cutting board and just kind of peeled against the grain of the uh, membranes and it pulls right out. Makes it a nice clean pepper. And I don't know if I said this, but the recipe says that we're going to be blending it in a blender or a food processor. That's why we're putting it in our blender. And then it also asks for two cloves of garlic peeled. And I'm going to use my little garlic peeler. Uh, I've mentioned before we got this on Amazon. We'll link it below. And it doesn't say anything about chopping it or anything because I'm sure it'll be blended. I am going to go ahead and smash it, smash it though. Okay. <clears throat> and it asks for some fresh parsley. I don't have fresh parsley. I do have some dried parsley, so that's what I'm going to use. It says a handful. I'm just gonna put like two teaspoons in here. Yeah, I'm gonna put three teaspoons. <laughs> it's 
smell good? It smells good. I'm gonna put four teaspoons. <laughs> okay. You never have too much parsley, right? Exactly. Um, let's see here. And lime juice. <clears throat> Again, I don't have a fresh lime. We do have a yeah. little lime tree yeah. uh, in our garden, but it's not producing yeah. it. Yeah, it's, it's still tiny. Yeah. <laughs> so until then, I'm going to get, I looked it up and it says that a lime on average gives you two tablespoons of juice. So I have a teaspoon here, so I'm gonna do six teaspoons to get my two tablespoons. There's one. Two. Three. Four. Five. And last but not least, six. Can count. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now it says just to put this, let it blend up. Now we're going to put it on the little stand. <laughs> there we go. It's plugged in. I'm just, you think puree probably? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. We'll just do it. Like a salsa. Okay. That's probably good, don't you think? Probably, yeah. Yeah. I was gonna do a whole puree, but that's a whole minute, and about 12 seconds seemed to do the trick. Yeah. So I'm gonna look at it. Looks an awful lot like a salsa to me. Yep. Looks like everything got mixed up. So now it says pour it into jars. So we could just put regular canning lids on these and she said it says in there to mix it. We're gonna just mix it by shaking it just to make sure we get that salt mixed in there that we just put in earlier. So make sure you have the lid on good and then shake it a little. I don't know that that'll give me a whole other jar, but we'll see. <laughs> So yay! Looks like we got two and a half almost. Yeah. So this one might be a little salty, but this <laughs> might would be good to put in like in a recipe and then just don't add salt to it. Like yeah. I usually use in my meatloaf when I make meatloaf, I usually put salsa in it instead of tomato sauce. Yeah. So this would probably be perfect and then just not put salt in it. So yeah. And the reason it's going to be a little salty is because we put salt in first. And so, yeah. so we didn't measure for future that. reference, I would probably put the salt in last that way. Because had I not put the salt in and I knew that it only filled it halfway, I would have just put a teaspoon in this instead of a two ta uh, teaspoons. So, but anywho, that's an easy recipe. Super, super easy. Yeah, can't wait to see what it tastes like because I love salsa. So, <laughs> so this will sit on the cabinet room temperature for two to three days then it's ready to go in the refrigerator to enjoy for up to a year so it does not say anything about burping i would probably go ahead and burp it um just two to three days so it won't be any big deal to burp it each day um just to make sure that it doesn't build up anything but groovy so with what we have left from what we picked from the garden, we're going to do some testing with our freeze dryer. Uh, with okra, we do know that freeze dried okra is pretty tasty. Uh, we got some at the local uh, Amish store and uh, they let us taste test it and it was, it was awesome. Uh, it was a little smaller than like this piece, but we'll see what it does. Uh, we don't have okra growing yet because we, we fell behind on the, the whole planting it and getting our garden ready for that. Um, 
but we do have some in the ground. It's just little bitty sprigs of green coming up from the ground, so I hope that's an okra plant. <laughs> <laughs> um, We're gonna find out yeah. it's just a weed. Yeah, and who knows, it could be. Uh, um, but so we're gonna do some okra. We're going to do some uh, banana peppers. We're gonna do some whole just to see what happens there to see if it makes like a good snack, kind of like the okra does. And then we're gonna also chop some up and put on there. Um, and we'll just see how much we kind of fill up in the on our uh, trays. Yeah. Go from there. Now, if there's room, I want to dice up some of the Anaheim's because uh, I use a lot of green chilies when I cook. I know I said that I don't handle spice very well. As long as it's in stuff and mixed up, if the recipe's good, I can handle it. But um, if we have enough room, I'm gonna dice up some of those to put in there. Um, and then also, um, if we have any extra room, I fermented some sauerkraut from the recipe from Stacy's book. I don't think I recorded that one. I'll have to bring y'all along on the next time I do that. But I know that you can freeze dry fermented foods. So I thought the sauerkraut would be a really good thing to try. But that's only if I have enough room on the trays. So we'll see how that goes. We're also gonna freeze dry some green peppers because we like having green peppers and onions freeze dried and ready to use. We put it in a, a big mason jar and then we keep it airtight. Um, makes a great way to add um, onions and peppers to your meals when you're making them. Most of the time, I don't even take the time to reconstitute them or uh, do anything like that. I just put it in there as I'm making it. And by the time it's ready, it's always been, yeah, seems ready and done. Um, I have noticed with onions, if you don't get them reconstituted and you expose them to heat, they do burn way faster. But, so you can't exactly saute yeah, the Yeah, you can't dried. just saute freeze dried onions. You may want to reconstitute those first. But all in all, they when I'm making eggs or like we made pizza, I just toss it in there with the pizza. And then as I cook it, it, it usually turns out pretty good. So. Yeah, it has really good flavor. So we got a, quite a few green, pe uh, yeah, green bell peppers from our garden. So I'm going to go ahead and chop those up because I do want those chopped. I know that much. So, yeah. So while he's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and put this uh, okra kind of mixed together. And I kind of looked in my Harvest Right recipe book and looks like you just kind of coat them with some olive oil and some seasoning and then you freeze dry them. So it's pretty simple. And it didn't even look like you really cut off the ends. Yeah, the ones we tried at the Amish store had the ends still on them and they were still really good. Yeah, so, so I'm going to just keep it like that. Okay, so I'm going to just toss a little olive oil in the bowl. Got move them around in it. And I'm actually going to use a little bit of farm dust, which we can pick this up at our the Amish store as well. Uh, it's Weaver's Dutch Country Seasoning, called Farm Dust Seasoning. Uh, it has kosher salt, sea salt, dried onion and garlic, black pepper, fennel, celery, marjoram, thyme, rosemary, savory, sage, organ, <laughs> oregano, and basil. So I'm gonna just dust a little bit in here. and toss this. And I'm gonna go ahead and we're using the liners for the trays because everything we're putting in here is not liquid, so. Okay, and I'm just gonna to toss those in there. Spread them on the tray. And again, I'm not gonna cut these or anything on this, this particular well, and we're just going to see how they do whole. And we already got our freeze dryer turned on and cooled down, so it's ready for the trays as we get them ready. So I have all 
all the banana peppers sliced up now and I have a little bit of space and I have this little tomato left and I think what I'm gonna do is slice it up and put it on there because I've heard that freeze dried tomatoes are really good. I have not tried it, but we're gonna try it today. Have the tray ready to go in. She's just zooming past me. In your defense, one of those was fairly easy to. <laughs> so I got the green peppers all chopped up and ready to go as well. So I just kind of made a fairly thin layer, but they're still kind of all over each other. It's not worth taking the time to actually make a, a one single layer out of it. So this will work just. It'll fine. work just fine. Yeah. And we're gonna leave the rest of the bell peppers for other uh, cooking purposes, where we could actually use a raw bell pepper. So. Or I might slice it and just eat it raw. Yeah, she likes to snack on them. So. I don't mind them, they're just not my favorite. Now we're gonna dice up some of the Anaheims to fill up that tray. Okay, well, I think we've got as many Anaheims that are gonna fit on this tray. So we're going to put this one in the See you.